Imagine this. You're suffering from a serious toothache. You overcome the stabbing pain just long enough to book an appointment with the dentist. You arrive on time and approach the help desk. From behind the counter, a receptionist consults the all-powerful oracle. After a brief moment, they deliver a verdict. It says nine. Okay, so maybe this is the punchline of a poorly aged British sketch show. But it is also how many of our machine learning systems currently operate. Customers are expected to trust black box models with no justification for their decisions. Often, these decisions will have consequences that could be beyond delayed relief for a toothache. A model could reject your application for a mortgage or diagnose you with cancer. Even if these decisions are correct, we would expect an explanation. A human could give one. A human could say that your income is too low or that a cluster of cells is malignant. To get similar explanations from a model, we look to the field of explainable artificial intelligence or XAI. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Today, we'll take a brief look at what XAI aims to achieve and the various approaches at our disposal. These include intrinsically interpretable models and model agnostic methods. These two approaches are the focus of this video, but we'll touch on some other approaches including causal models, counterfactuals, adversarial examples, and non-agnostic methods. XAI is a young field and new advancements are constantly being made in all these areas. So we need to end the video on a note. Don't get caught up in terminology. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course where I give an introduction to XAI, teach you to build interpretable models and go into depth on the theory and Python code for model agnostic methods, including Lime, SHAP, PDPs, ice plots, ALEs, and Friedman's age statistic. So, XAI, also known as Interpretable Machine Learning, IML, aims to build machine learning models that humans can understand. It can be thought of as both a field of research and the set of existing tools and methodologies developed by that field. This includes methods to interpret black box models, and modeling methodologies used to build models that are easy to interpret. So we can think of XAI as both interpreting models and making models more interpretable. In a later video, we'll see that explaining predictions to a less technical audience also falls in the domain of this field. That is how we go from interpretations that data scientists can understand to human-friendly explanations. So really, XAI involves any method used to understand or explain how a model makes predictions. We take a closer look at some of those now. The first approach is to build models that are intrinsically interpretable. These are simple models that can be understood by a human without the need for additional methods. We only need to look at the model's parameters or a model summary. These will tell us how an individual prediction was made or even what trends are captured by the model. A decision tree is a good example of this type of model. Take this one, which has been trained to predict whether someone would default on a car loan. Suppose we want to understand why we gave a loan to a 29 year old student with a $3,000 monthly income. The person is over 25, so we go to the right at the first node. Then she has an income of greater than 2000, so we go to the right again and arrive at a no leaf node. So the model predicts that the student will not default and the automated underwriting system sanctions the loan. Other examples are linear models like linear or logistic regression. For example, suppose we also want a model that predicts the maximum loan size given to a person. We use a person's age and income as features and get the following equation. Understanding why the student above has a predicted maximum loan size of $33,100 is straightforward. We can also see the trends captured by the model. That is, the loan size increases by $100 for every additional year of age and $10 for every additional dollar of income. So, like the decision tree, 
we can look at the model's parameters and understand how it makes predictions. This is because these models are relatively simple. The decision tree has a few nodes and the linear model has three parameters. As models become more complicated, we can no longer understand them in this way. A machine learning model is a function. The model features are the input and the predictions are the output. A black box model is a function that is too complicated for a human to understand. We need additional methods to be able to peer into the black box and understand how it works. An example is a random forest. These are made up of many decision trees. The predictions of all the individual trees are taken into account when making the final prediction. To understand how a random forest works, we would have to simultaneously understand all of the individual trees. Even with a small number of trees, this would not be possible for a human. Things get even more complicated when we start to look at algorithms like neural networks. To put it into perspective, UNet, a convolutional neural network used for image segmentation, has over 30 million parameters. Our regression model above only had three. It's simply not possible for a human to comprehend how a model like UNet works by looking at the parameter weights alone. For many use cases, a well-structured linear model is a far better option than a more complex model. However, some problems cannot be solved by a simple model. In this case, we must turn to model agnostic methods to interpret our models. A model agnostic method can be applied to any model. When using these methods, the model is treated as a black box after it has been trained. In other words, the method does not require that we look into the inner workings of the model. If we want to use the method on a different model, we simply swap them out. These methods can be divided into two groups. The first group are those that provide global interpretations. These help us understand the entire model. These are methods like permutation feature importance, PDPs, ice plots, and the HSTAT. The other group includes methods like line, which provide local interpretations. These tell us how model features have contributed to individual predictions. SHAP is the most useful method as it can provide both global and local interpretations. In a later video, we'll see that we can also categorize model agnostic methods based on how they are created. One approach is to use surrogate models. These methods work by training intrinsically interpretable models on the black box model predictions. This way, we can understand the black box model by directly interpreting the surrogate model. Machine learning only cares about associations. A model could use country of origin to predict the chance of developing skin cancer. However, the true cause is the varying levels of sunshine in each of the countries. We call country of origin a proxy variable. When building causal models, we aim to use only causal relationships. We do not want to include any model features that are proxies for the true causes. To do this, we need to rely on domain knowledge and put more effort into feature engineering and selection. Model agnostic methods seek to answer why questions. Why was my loan application rejected? We can observe trends captured by a model or which features have contributed most to a prediction. We can get answers like your income is too low. In comparison, counterfactual explanations seek to answer how questions, such as how can my application be accepted? More specifically, a counterfactual explanation is the smallest change we need to make to a feature value to change a prediction. Finding this, we can get answers like your annual income must increase by $1,000. Adversarial examples are observations that lead to unintuitive predictions. If a human had looked at the data, they would have made a different prediction. Finding adversarial examples is similar to counterfactual explanations. The difference is we want to change the feature values to intentionally trick the model. Adversarial examples are more common in computer vision. It is possible to create image that look perfectly normal to a human but lead to incorrect predictions. For example, researchers at Google showed how introducing a layer of noise could change the prediction of an image classification model. 
You can see that, to a human, the layer of noise is not even noticeable. Yet, the model now predicts the panda is a given. Many methods have been developed for specific black box models. For tree-based methods, we can count the number of splits for each feature. For neural networks, we have methods like pixel-wise decomposition and deep lift. Although SHAP would be considered model agnostic, it also has non-agnostic approximation methods. For example, TreeShap can only be used with tree-based methods and DeepShap for neural networks. The obvious downside is that model-specific methods can only be used with specific models. This is why research has been directed towards agnostic methods. These give us more flexibility when it comes to algorithm selection. It also means that our interpretation methods are future-proof, as they could be used to interpret algorithms that haven't even been developed yet. When you first dive into the field of XAI, you'll notice similar terms flying around. Interpretability versus explainability, interpretations versus explanations. We can't even seem to decide on a name for the field. Is it interpretable machine learning or explainable AI? Part of the problem is that XAI is a new field. Definitions are still being proposed and debated. Machine learning researchers are also quick to create new terms for concepts that already exist. So just a word of advice is don't get too hung up on terminology and always consider a word in its context. If you want to take a closer look at one definition, then check out this video. I discuss the difference between an interpretable and explainable model. Otherwise, you could find loads more XAI content in this playlist. Also, remember you can get access to my XAI course for free. 